Good afternoon, class. Today I'm going to discuss Chapter 5, which is entitled Deductions for and from AGI. In Chapter 5, we're going to cover health savings accounts, self-employed insurance deductions, IRAs, Roth IRAs. I'll explain the general contribution rules for small business self-employed retirement plans. Describe other adjustments for adjusted gross income. Calculate itemized deductions for medical expenses, uh, deductions for tax. Apply the rules for individual taxpayers' interest deductions. Determine charitable contribution deductions and describe other itemized deductions. So HSAs, health savings accounts. There are four types of tax-favored medical spending plans available to taxpayers, and they are the health care flexible spending arrangements, uh, health reimbursements arrangements, medical savings accounts, and health savings accounts. And so the health care flexible spending arrangements, FSAs, employees set aside money to cover medical expenses, uh, health reimbursement arrangements, HRAs are employer funds, an account that can be used by employees for medical expenses. Medical savings accounts uh, permit deduction for amounts contributed to an account established for medical expenses. For small business and self-employed individuals, effective January 1st, 2008, no new MSA accounts may be established. And then health savings accounts, HSAs, a type of savings account established for paying unreimbursed medical expenses by taxpayers who carry qualifying high deductible health insurance. And so contributions to HSAs are deductible for adjusted gross income. Um, they're limited to a certain dollar amount depending on the age and whether a high deductible insurance covers an individual or the family. And so earnings and unused contributions accumulated in HSA are not taxed and distributions to cover medical expenses are not taxed or penalized. So deductions for contributions to HSAs. And so 2019 contribution limits are as follows. And here you have family and self-employed in this illustration. So you have contribution limits. The additional catch-up contribution for taxpayers age 55 and older, maximum health insurance deductible, and maximum health insurance out-of-pocket. And so HSA's uh, contributions must be made by April 15th of the year following the year the contribution was made. Distributions. Distributions from HSA's are tax-free when used to pay for qualified medical expenses. Distributions not used to pay for qualified medical expenses are subject to income tax and a 20% penalty. However, once taxpayer is 65 years old, distributions taken for medical non for non-medical expenses are subject to income tax, but not the 20% penalty. Distributions from HSAs are reported on Form 1099-SA. Form 8889 is attached to the taxpayer's 1040 to report HSA contributions and distributions. And so this guidance in publication 969 is a good source for information about HSAs. So self-employed health insurance deduction. The self-employed taxpayers are allowed an above-the-line deduction for the cost of providing health insurance for themselves and their families. And so deductible insurance includes the following. There's medical and dental insurance paid to cover for self-employed taxpayers, his or her spouse, and dependents. Medical dental insurance paid for children under the age of 27 who are not dependents. Medical premiums and long-term long care insurance paid for taxpayers and his or her family within certain dollar limitations. And so self-employed health insurance deduction is limited by the following special rules. The deduction is not allowed for any months in which a taxpayer is eligible to participate in an employer-sponsored health care plan. The deduction cannot exceed the taxpayer's net self-employed earned income. And there are individual limitations on the deduction for long-term care premiums. So refer to the table on page 5-7 for 2019 limitations on the premiums. And so the individual retirement accounts. Two principal types of IRAs in the United States, traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. And so a traditional IRA or annual contributions are deductible. Retirement uh, distributions are taxable and earnings not taxable in the current year. And so with a Roth IRA, annual contributions are not deductible. Retirement distributions are non-taxable and earnings are not taxable in the current year. IRA annual contributions. And so a Roth or a traditional IRA contribution is limited to either 
lesser of 10% of the taxpayer's earned income or $6,000 is contributed to IRA of a spouse that has no, earn, no earned income. Maximum contribution to spouses IRA is $6,000. In 2019, taxpayers and spouses aged 50 and over can contribute an additional $1,000 annual catch-up contribution, increasing the maximum contribution to $7,000. And so annual deduction maximums are reduced for traditional IRAs if taxpayers participate in another qualified retirement plan. Annual contributions for Roth IRAs are reduced for taxpayers over certain income limits, but is not affected by taxpayers' participation in another qualified retirement plan. In each case, maximum annual contribution is phased out uh, proportionately between certain AGI ranges. And so refer again to another table, 5-9 for 2019, uh, AGI phase-out ranges for Roth and traditional IRA contributions. So if a taxpayer contributes to both a traditional and a Roth IRA, uh, the combined contribution cannot exceed $6,000, 7,000 if age 50 or older, and taxpayer with income over the phase out ranges may contribute to non-deductible traditional IRA. So an example, Roth IRA contribution. Owen, age 42, is single and wants to contribute the maximum to his Roth IRA. His a AGI is $126,000. Thus, his contribution will be limited. Using a table on page 5-9, calculate how much Owen can contribute to his Roth IRA. What amount could he contribute if he was at age 62? And so here, they're showing you the calculation for the solution. Uh, the amount remaining in his phase-out range needs to be divided by the phase-out range times the maximum deduction. So here you have 137,000 minus 126,000 divided by um, 15,000 and then multiplied by the maximum deduction of 6,000, which gives you 4,398 allowed for the Roth IRA contribution. And if he was age 62, again, you'll have the 137,000 um, phase out range minus the amount remaining of the 126,000 divided by 15,000 multiplied by the 7,000 maximum deduction gives you $5,131 allowed uh, for the Roth IRA contribution. So traditional IRA contribution example, Liza and Michael are married and are both 41 years old. They file their taxes jointly. Liza is covered by a 401k plan at work and earns $96,000. Michael is not covered by a plan at work and earns $30,000. Using the table on page 5-3, how much can each of them contribute to a traditional IRA? So here, when you have when one spouse is an active participant in a retirement plan and the other is not, the two separate income limitations apply. The active participant spouse may make a full deductible IRA contribution unless the 103,000 through 123,000 phase out range applies to the couple's joint income. The spouse who is not an active participant may make a full deductible contribution unless the higher of the 193,000 through the 203,000 phase out range applies to their capital joint income. And so here Liza and Michael's joint income was 126,000. Since it exceeds the 103,000 through the 123,000 phase out range for the participant, um, Liza cannot make a deductible contribution to a traditional IRA. However, since the joint income does not exceed the 193,000 through the 203,000 range, which would apply to Michael, Michael can make the full $6,000 traditional IRA contribution, uh, typically because Michael is not covered by a plan at work. So he falls into the second category. Roth IRA conversions. And so taxpayers may wish to convert the traditional IRA to a Roth IRA and uh, include those with many years to retirement, a low current tax bracket, a high expected tax bracket in retirement, negative taxable income. And so income generated by the conversion is subject to current income tax. There is no longer a rule that taxpayers must have $100,000 or less in AGI to convert traditional IRAs to Roth IRAs. Traditional IRA distributions. 
money taken from traditional IRAs is taxable as ordinary income and may be subject to the 10% pe early penalty withdrawal if taken before age 59 and a half. However, normally when you prepare someone's tax return, you're going to see if they qualify for one of these exceptions. And so, however, penalty-free withdrawals may be made by taxpayers under the age of 59 and a half who are disabled, using a special level payment option, using withdrawals for unreimbursed medical expenses in excess of 10% of their adjusted gross income, recipients of at least 12 weeks of unemployment compensation and paying medical insurance premiums for the dependents, paying higher education costs, purchasing a home for the first time up to 10000 beneficiaries due to the death of an IRA owner, withdrawing funds to an internal revenue service uh, levy, or a qualified reservist. So those are the um, exception situations. And so a Roth IRA distribution, withdrawals are tax-free as long as the Roth IRA was open for five years and any of the following requirements are met. So distribution is made on or after the date the participant turns 59 and a half. Distribution is made to beneficiary on or after the participant's death. Participant becomes disabled. Distribution is used to pay for qualified first-time home buyers' expenses. Distribution may be taxable if any of any of the of the requirements are not satisfied. And so the part of the distribution that represents a return of capital is tax free and the part that represents a payout of earnings is taxable. Small business and self-employed retirement plans. And so tax law provides favorable tax treatment to contributions by or for employees to qualify retirement plans and employers. Employers may claim deduction in the current year. Employees do not include employer contributions and in income until contributed amounts are disrupted. Tax on earnings on amounts contributed is deferred. Most retirement plans have a number of requirements in order to be classified as qualified. And so most require the benefit to be extended to all employees. Most require a separate account to hold retirement assets, typically handled by a bank or financial institution. Most penalize or prohibit early withdrawals, and some require an immediate vesting of contribution. So self-employed and small business retirement plan options. Over time, tax law has created various retirement plan aims at small business owners and self-employed proprietors. So here you have SCP or SCP IRA. A simple IRA or payroll deduction IRA. And so a SEP IRA is available to any employer. Contributes Contribution amounts can change from year to year. Participants must meet requirements for minimum age and years of service. Contributions and deductions are limited under different rules for employees versus self-employed business owners. And to avoid penalties and tax, taxpayers generally may receive distributions before age 59 and a half and must start drawing by age 70 and a half. Payroll deduction IRA is uh, probably the easiest plan to offer. The contributions are withheld from employees pay and, and directed into a traditional IRA account. Simple IRA is available to employees with 100 or fewer employees. Both employer and employees are eligible to contribute to an annual limit of $13,000, $16,000 for taxpayers age 50 and older. Self-employed 401ks, solo 401k, safe harbor, and traditional 401k plans. Uh, Section 401k plan permits employees to either receive a direct payment of compensation in cash, defer the amount through an employer contribution made on employees' half to a profit sharing or stock bonus plan. Such plan may be made may be structured as a salary reduction agreement. The employee may be allowed to reduce his or her compensation or forgo an increase in compensation with the amount contributed to a qualified retirement plan, thereby deferring tax on the compensation. Employees choose a percentage of their pay to be withheld and contributed to the plan. So employers may match employee contribution up to a certain percentage in order to encourage participation. Uh, amount contributed by employers excluded from employees' gross income. In all 401k plans, contributions are limited in two ways. The annual contribution cannot exceed $19,000. It is reduced dollar for dollar for amounts contributed to other salary reduction plans offered by the employer. And contribution amounts are subject to limitations applicable to all qualified plans. Contributions and earnings on amounts invested in plans are taxable only when withdrawn.
small business and self-employed retirement plans. And so self-employed 401k or solo 401k plans are designed for self-employed individuals and no employees. Traditional 401k plans can be used by any type of company, but are more appropriate for businesses with at least 20 employees. In addition to general qualification requirements for all qualified plans, Section 401k plans must meet the following requirements. Amount deferred must be 100% vested. Amount deferred may be distribu distributed only upon retirement or separation of service, death, disability, attainment of age 59 and a half, or hardship. And so a safe harbor 401k plan operates like other 401k plans with one exception. They require the immediate vesting for employer contributions. Amounts set aside for 401k plans are the same as regular 401k plans, except for the dollars paid do not reduce employees' taxable income. Withdrawals, including earnings, are generally tax-free for Roth 401k plans. Roth 401k plans are popular for the following reasons. They allow significantly higher contributions than Roth IRAs, and there is no AGI limitation. So other AGI deductions, educator expenses. So eligible educators may deduct up to $250 for unreimbursed cost of classroom materials, uh, books, computers, equipment, etc., as a deduction in arriving at AGI. So an eligible educator is a kindergarten through grade 12 teacher, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide for at least 900 hours a school year in a school that provides elementary or secondary education. And so if, if a married filing joint couple are both eligible educators, total deduction is up to $500, but not more than $250 per spouse. Unreimbursed business expenses for performing artists and others. And so three different types of taxpayer eligible are eligible for deducting unreimbursed business expenses as a AGI deduction for AGI deduction. A performing art artist who worked for at least two employers during the year received at least $200 each for any of the two of these employers had business expense of more than 10% of gross income and the AGI of 16,000 or less after deducting these expenses. A National Guard or Reserve member who travels more than 100 miles away from home in connection with service in the reserves and a state or local fee-based government official. And so moving expenses in 2018, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act repealed the ability for taxpayers to deduct job-related moving expenses. And so the only exception for a member is a member for armed forces uh, pursuant to a military order and permanent change of station are the only ones that can use a moving expense deduction now. And so medical expenses. And so medical expenses are the first items deducted on a Schedule A. And so, of course, a Schedule A is used for itemized deductions. And so taxpayers are allowed a deduction for medical expenses paid for themselves, spouse, and dependents. Unreimbursed medical expenses can only be deducted in an extent that they exceed 10% of the taxpayer's AGI. And so there's a formula for calculating the deduction for medical expenses, and it is as follows. And here they have prescriptions, medicine, drugs, insulin, doctors, dentists, hospital, medical insurance, premiums. Other, uh, then you have your other medical dental expenses such as lodging, transportation, eyeglasses, contact lenses. Less your insurance reimbursements uh, gives you a subtotal, and then you're going to take 10% of the adjusted gross income which will leave you at the excess expenses qualifying for the medical deduction. And so what qualifies as a medical deduction, a medical expense? Qualified medical expenses include prescription medicine and drugs and insulin, fees for doctors, dentists, nurses, and other medical professionals, hospital fees, hearing aids, dentures, prescription eyeglasses, contact lenses, and then also transportation. You have medical transportation includes amounts paid for taxes, buses, airplanes, Includes out-of-pocket expenses for gas and personal automobiles used. Includes parking and toll fees and standard mileage rate at $0.20 cent per mile. So lodging up to $50 per night. Medical aids. And so crutches, wheelchairs, guide dogs, birth control prescriptions, uh, acupuncture, psychiatric care. Medical insurance premiums, so includes your Medicare premiums. Uh, includes premium pay for the qualified long-term care expense insurance, certain qualified expenditures deemed necessary, medically necessary by a doctor, 
and nursing home care for chronically ill. And so certain medical expenses that are not deductible include costs of travel for general improvement of health, costs of weight loss programs, costs of marriage counseling, cosmetic surgery if unnecessary, non-prescription medicines, drugs purchased illegally from abroad, and meal costs on trips for medical care. So medical expense example. So during the year, Frida and Jose paid the following medical expenses. They had contact lenses for $120, facelift for cosmetic purposes of $2,900, doctor bills of $1,600, and medical insurance premiums of $4,800. They also drove 260 miles to see a cardiologist in July in their personal automobile. Their insurance company reimbursed Frida and Jose $1,000 during the year for medical expenses. If their AGI is $31,200, calculate their medical expenses medical expense deduction. And so here you have contact lenses, which are deductible, doctor bills, medical insurance and premium uh, premiums. The transportation would be the 260 miles times the 20 cent per mile that's allowed at $52. Then you're gonna list insurance reimbursements. They received $1,000 in the narrative. And then you're gonna take 10% of their AGI, which was 31,000. It's gonna be $3,120. That's a 31,200 times 10%. And that's going to give you the ex excess expenses qualifying for medical deduction of $2,452. So taxes. Taxes are generally deductible. Fees are not deductible. So taxes are imposed by government to raise revenue for general public purposes. Fees are charges with a direct benefit to those paying the fees. So example of deduct deductible taxes on the Schedule A are state, local, and foreign income taxes, state taxes in lieu of state and local income tax, state, local, and foreign real property tax, and state, local, and foreign personal property tax. And so foreign property taxes only deductible if included in carrying on a business or, or for production of income. So the aggregate amount of deduction is $10,000 for all of the following state and local real property tax, state and local personal property tax, state and local foreign income tax and sales tax. If taxpayers paid or accrued and carrying, carrying on a business or for production of income, the 10,000 aggregate limitation rule does not apply to any of the following foreign income tax, state and local foreign real property tax and state and local personal property tax. So examples of non-deductible taxes are federal income tax, employee portion of social security tax, estate inheritance and gift tax, excise taxes and gasoline taxes, and foreign income taxes. So income taxes and sales taxes. Taxpayers may elect to deduct either of the following as an itemized deduction state and local sales and use tax or state and local income tax. For taxpayers that deduct state and local income taxes paid during the year, deduction amount is the total amount of state and local taxes withheld from pay plus any amount actually paid during the year, even if the taxpayers tax payments are from a prior year. If taxpayer receives refund of tax deductions in a prior year, a refund must be generally be included in gross income in the year that the refund is received. Taxpayers that do not provide any tax benefit in the year paid are not required to be included in income in a year received as a refund. And so to calculate deduction for sales tax and taxpayer must use either the actual sales tax paid or an estimated sales tax from the IRS tax table. So an example, so income tax deduction. Colleen amends her 2017 state tax return and must pay an additional $843 state income tax in 2019. Of the 843 she owes, 93 is for penalties and interest. Colleen has $660 of state income tax withheld from her wages during 2019. During the year, she also paid a quarterly estimated state income tax payment as follows. So $200 each on April 15th and June 15th and August 15th of the current year and January 15th of the next year. And so $155, the fourth quarter estimate from the prior year on January 15th of the current year. Based on this information, how much can Colleen take for taxes as an itemized deduction. 
And so Colleen may deduct the actual amounts paid in 2019 limited to the $10,000. So on her Schedule A, the penalties and interest are not deductible. So she'll have the $750 plus the $660, $200, then the two other $200 payments plus $155, which will give her the $2,165 for the itemized deductions for state income taxes. And again, that's all the amounts that she paid in 2019, except for the penalties and interest. Property tax. Taxes levied on state and local property for general public welfare are deductible. Non-deductible property taxes include special assessments charged to provide benefits to local property owners. These amounts increase basis for taxpayers' property. And so service fees like garbage fees and homeowner association fees are not deductible. So for real estate sold during the year, buyer and seller must um, allocate taxes based on the number of days property was held by each during the year. So allocation is generally made by the escrow company or a closing agent. Allocation amounts are, are itemized on closing settlements for the sale. Personal property tax. To be deductible, personal property tax must be levied based on the property's value. Taxes of a fixed amount or those calculated on a basis other than value such as weight are not deductible. So as an example, Selma age 80, AGI of 31300 for 2019, she itemized her deductions and therefore deducts the amounts allowable am amount of taxes. Federal income tax withheld for the year are $2,150. State income tax withheld are $1,500. Social security taxes are $1,768. Selma paid property taxes on her house of $3,300 for the year and paid garbage fees of $867. She paid an automobile registration fee of $210, of which $30 is based on the weight of the automobile and the balance of the value of the automobile. How much may Selma show as an itemized deduction for taxes in 2019? And so here she will show the $1,500 for the state income tax, the $3,300 for the property taxes on her house, the $180 which is the difference between the $210, I'm sorry, the $2,210 for the registration fee less the $30 that's based on the weight of the automobile, which would be the $180, which would result in the $4,980. She would not be allowed to use the $2,150 from the federal taxes as non-deductible, nor the $30 for the weight of the car and not the garbage fees of $867. Interest. Interest is an amount paid for the use of borrowed funds. Deductible personal interest includes qualified residence interest, which is mortgage interest, um, mortgage interest, prepayment penalties, investment interest, and certain interests associated with passive activities. Consumer interest is not deductible and includes interest on any loan in which the proceeds are used for personal purposes. Taxpayer obligations to deduct interest on debt. Taxpayer must be le um, legally liable for the debt. Prepaid interest, cash basis. Taxpayers are required to use actual basis for deducting prepaid interest. Prepaid interest must be capitalized. Deduction must be spread over the life of the loan. And so exceptions are points on a mortgage loan, purchasing or improving taxpayer principal residence may be deducted in the year that is paid. Qualified residence, home equity and consumer interest. So qualified residence interest is interest paid on debt that results from acquiring, construction, constructing or substantially improving a taxpayer's principal or second residence. Interest deduction for qualified debt has been lowered from $1 million to $750,000 through 2025. For qualified mortgage debt included on or before December 15, 2017, the $1 million limit still applies. And so interest deduction up to $100,000 of a home equity debt has been suspended through 2025, unless the home equity debt is qualified acquisition debt. Education loan interest. Taxpayers are allowed deduction for, a, for an AGI above the line for certain interest paid on qualified education loans. And so the deduction limit is 2,500. 
is phased out for single taxpayers with a modified AGI of 70,000 to 85,000 and married taxpayers with a modified AGI of 140 to 170,000. So investment interest. Investment interest deduction is limited to taxpayers' net investment income. And so the net investment income is equal to investment income less investment expenses. Dividends and capital gains may only be included as investment income if taxpayers calculate tax on them at an ordinary income rates. And so any unused investment interest can be carried forward and deducted in future years, but only to the extent that the taxpayer's net investment income exceeds investment interest expense for that year. And so investment income deduction is reported on Form 4952. Charitable contributions. Charitable contributions are allowed as a deduction, and so to be deductible, donations must be cash or property. And so the value of free use of taxpayers' property by a charitable organization is not deductible. So out-of-pocket expenses related to charitable activities are deductible. So mileage deduction is at $0.14 cent per mile. To be deductible, the donation must be made to a qualified recipient, such as the United States, a state, or political subdivision thereof, a domestic organization formed and operated exclusively for charitable, religious, educational, scientific, and literary purposes, or prevention of cruelty to children and animals, a church, synagogue, or religious organization, or veterans organization, civil defense organization, fraternal societies operating under the lodge system, and certain nonprofit cemetery companies. The following contributions are not deductible gifts to non qualified recipients, uh, needy individuals, labor unions, political parties, contributions of time, service, the use of property or blood, contributions where benefit is received from contribution, like tuition, and uh, wagering losses, like bingo or raffle tickets. So if the taxpayer donates cash, deduction is equal to cash amount. If taxpayer donates property, deduction is equal to the fair value of the property at the time of donation. If the property sale would have produced a long-term capital gain, deduction is generally equal to the fair value market of the property at the time of donation. So an example, um, B donates an antique couch to a nonprofit that provides housing items to battered women. The couch cost 2500 is now worth 4000 how much may she deduct for contributions um, would the deduction change if she had donated the couch to an environmental organization and so the solution the couch is being put to a use related to the organization's primary purpose the deduction is equal to the fair market value of the couch which is four thousand dollars if she donated the couch to an environmental organization, the purpose is unrelated. Therefore, she must reduce her deduction by the amount of the long-term capital gain that would have resulted if the item had been sold. And so that's the $4,000 less the $1,500, uh, which would have gave her a $2,500 deduction. So There's a big difference depending on the purpose of the organization that you donate and what the item is. Percentage limitation. Generally, a deduction for charitable contributions is limited to a 50% of the taxpayer's AGI. And so this 50% 50, 50 limitation applies to donations to public charities, private operating foundations, private non-operating foundations if they uh, distribute the contribution to public charities within a specific time period. And so the TCGA increased the 50% limit to 60% for cash contributions to public charities and other 50% organizations. Non-cash contributions remain subject to the 50% limit. Gifts to organizations such as uh, certain private non-operating foundations, fraternal societies, veteran organizations are limited to a 30% of the AGI. For contributions of long-term capital gain property, the contribution is 30%. If full, full market value of the property is deducted, the contribution is to a 50% organization. Non-charitable contribution deduction is allowed for a payment to a college or university if exchanged for the right to purchase tickets or seating at an athletic event. Substantiation rules. 
And so no charitable deduction is allowed for contributions of $250 or more unless a written substantiation from the recipient is provided. And so no particular form is needed for written acknowledgement. Acknowledgement must be obtained on or before the date the tax return for the tax year of the contribution is filed. If charity provides a false written um, acknowledgement, it is subject to a penalty of generally $1,000. Taxpayers donating cash less than $250 must keep a canceled check or a written communication from the charity. Taxpayers who itemize deductions should use checks instead of cash for church and similar donations. So this is basically speaking to your record keeping. You must keep uh, accurate records. Gifts of clothing and household items, so furnishing, electronics, appliances must be in good condition or better to qualify for a deduction. Deductions for a donated vehicle, boat, or plane is limited to the amount for which a charity sells the property. And so charity is required to provide a resale information on a Form 1098-C and send to the taxpayer who must attach the Form 1098-C to their tax return for deductions substantiation. Uh, taxpayer may claim the estimated value if a charity uses the donated property rather than selling it or donating it to a needy individual. For quid pro quo contributions of more than $75, charities must provide donor with a written disclosure. Disclosure must provide donor with good faith estimate value on goods and services. Inform donors that the only contribution amount in excess of the value of the goods and services are deductible. A penalty of $10 per contribution per event capped at $5,000 must be imposed on charities that fail to make required disclosures. So charitable contribution. During the year, uh, Clem donates $1,260 to his synagogue's youth group, allows the youth group to use his lake cabin valued at $500 and drives 1,000 miles on behalf of the uh, YWCA and donates a vehicle valued at $950 to the battered women's shelter. The shelter sells the automobile for $750 and issues a 1098C to Clem. What is Clem's charitable contribution deduction if his AGI is 33,200? And so the solution is the $1,260 plus the thousand miles at 14 cent a mile plus the $750 that he received on the 1098C, which is $2,150 deduction. And so Clem must attach the form 1098C to his tax return to substantiate the vehicle uh, deduction. Casualty theft and loss. Deductions are allowed for casualty and theft losses. Uh, deductions may, may either itemize itemized deductions or deductions for AGI if business related. And so a casualty is, is a complete or partial destruction of a property resulting from a identifiable event of a sudden, unexpected, and unusual nature. And so example of property damage from storms, floods, fires, and vandalism. Theft losses are, are deductible if taxpayers can, can prove theft occurred. And so casualty losses are deductible in a year of occurrence. Theft losses are deductible in a year theft is discovered. And so measuring the loss, the amount of the casualty or loss, theft loss is measured by one of the following two rules, rule A and rule B. Rule A is the deduction is based on the decrease in fair market value of the property not to exceed the adjusted basis of the property. And rule B, the deduction is based on the adjustment basis of the property. Deduction limitations, the TCGAA suspended the allowable loss for personal casualty losses, except when losses are attributed to a federal declared disaster. And so such losses are subject to a $100, $100 floor per casualty and must exceed 10% of AGI to, in order to be deducted. And so if declared qualified uh, federal disaster, then there is a $500 floor and no 10% AGI phase, phase out. Miscellaneous expenses. So two types of miscellaneous itemized deductions, those subject to the 2% AGI floor and those not subject to the 2% AGI floor. And so the TCJA suspended deductions for all miscellaneous itemized deductions subject to the 2% of AGI rule. And so miscellaneous itemized deductions not subject to the 2% floor were not affected. 
And so you see the top of page 540 for a list of the most common of these deductions. And so a phase out of itemized deductions. So prior to 2018, certain high income taxpayers were subject to, to limits on the amount of itemized deductions. Certain AGI limits for different filing status triggered a reduction in itemized deductions by the lesser of either a 3% or 80%. So 3% of the excess of taxpayers AGI over the threshold amount or 80% of the itemized deductions, excluding deductions from medical expenses, investment interest expenses, casualty and theft losses, and gambling losses to the extent of gambling income. The C TCJA suspended the phase out. That completes the end of the lecture. Please go back and read chapter five and uh, complete the quiz. Thank you.